Welcome back to PWAs for Beginners. Today we're going to be talking about service workers and how to work with them. This is the second video of chapter two among all four videos. Here in the studio with me is Zach again. Hello. <laughs> so Zach, tell me, how do I add a service worker to my project? Yeah, so service workers are usually added um, in their own separate JavaScript file at the root of your project. Um, this file is often called sw.js, but you can really call it whatever you want. Um, one important thing to note about service workers is that they only have access to files at or below their current directory level. Um, and this is why we usually have it at the root of our project, because that means our service worker is going to have access to everything. Um, we usually add our service worker to our project through a process called registration. Um, and I think we're going to kind of get to that next. Registration, let's talk about it. How do you actually register a service worker then? Yeah, so um, registration is pretty straightforward and just takes a few lines of code in your index.html. Um, the first thing we have to do is we have to check that our current browsing context even has access to the um, service worker capability. Um, and then we're just going to make a call to service worker dot register and pass in the name of our service worker, and then we're all good to go. Cool. I think you mentioned event. Listeners earlier. Yeah. What about these? Have. What about these event um, listeners? Yeah. So service workers are event driven and primarily use event listeners to execute functionality. Um, we have an example of a listener in the snippet below where we make a call to the uh, add event listener function, um, and we're listening to the activate event, um, which is one of our service worker lifecycle events, um, and we then pass in a function to handle that event. Um, almost all of our key service worker functionality is going to be implemented in this way: listen for events and then handle those events asynchronously. Um, some of the events we'll be listening to include a couple of lifecycle events and our key service worker event, the fetch event, which we'll cover in more detail later on. Let's start with the lifecycle events then. What are some of the events that are actually lifecycle events for service workers? Yeah, so we have kind of two major lifecycle events. Um, those are going to be install and activate. Um, the install event is fired when a service worker is first installed. This is a great place to add a handler that does any setup for our service worker may need. Uh, this often includes what we call precaching, which we'll cover in the next video. Um, the next event is activate. This event is fired after our service worker is finished installing and becomes fully functional. Um, one of the key things we often do in the activate handler is something called claiming clients. This is basically when a service worker claims and takes responsibility for any existing instances of our application. So now that we have a service worker that it's registered, it's installed in the browser, right, um, and it's activated, what do we do next? What about the fetching events that you were talking about as yeah. part of? Yeah, so fetch is kind of the big event. It's the main event we're going to be concerned with the service workers. Um, this event is fired whenever our progressive web app makes a request to the network, you know, whenever it goes to fetch something. Um, and handlers for our fetch event, we can handle requests with custom logic, and like we mentioned earlier, provide fallback behavior for when we can't access the network. This often includes making use of caches. Um, I think in the next video, we'll take a deeper look at how to make effective use of both caches and the fetch event handler. Awesome. Thank you, Zach, and thank you for joining us in this video and learning all about different events. Uh, we've learned how to install and register and activate your service workers and how this fetching works. And in the next one, we, we will dig a little bit deeper into caching and fetching events specifically. As usual, here are all the resources that you can go take a look and explore these topics on your own. And stay tuned.